Hello, hello everyone. Welcome along. It's a new year and a new series as the drivers are preparing and qualifying right now for our brand new Winter Is Coming Championship. I am Mackenzie and you'll notice that tonight I am looking a little bit lonely in my uh, commentary box because Charlotte unfortunately is not able to make it so you're all stuck with me for this evening's live stream. But we do have uh, Mr. Harry Melvin in the background who's going to be helping out a little bit from the pit wall side of things and also doing a bit of stewarding. So if you happen to be watching this back after the race, wondering why you got an unfair penalty, have a chat with Harry Melvin, just to throw him under the bus straight off the bat for tonight. Hello, everyone. Welcome then to South Africa, where we're going to be racing at Kyle Army tonight. We got six corners to the right and nine to the left at this 2.85 mile long circuit. But let's take a bit of a run through the grid order and see who's where. Pretty much uh, a shock surprise, I would say, for pole position. It's uh, Mr. Matt Mitchell. So, lights be going out any second on the first round. There we are, five races ahead of us. But let's focus on this one for tonight as they hurtle down from the kink to the right. Not really much of a corner flat out, but then it's all going to get serious as we hit the brakes for the very first time. Looks like Storm is going to try and go around the outside. Hemming's got a little bit of space there. Bjork may be thinking about going around the outside as well. Chrissy giving lots of space. Contact in there, the middle. Nathan Wright, I saw going around one of the Sheba garage cars. There we are. There's something for the guys to pick up on in the background already. But it looks like at least the sort of top 10 or so commentators curse. Uh, Hemming gets clipped there, caught between two different cars and goes slightly off the track. Well, it's still looking fairly close between the front pack. Now, you'll notice the pit window was opened as well. As I said at the start, that's earlier than normal. So we're a few, basically at the three minute mark, pit window opens and then three minutes before the end of the race, it closes. So the drivers can pit whenever they want. And they also have to take tires. So you're going to see longer pit stops than what we're used to in our races. Oh, come back off onto that because Stallman had to really fend off Bjorken on the outside there. And they've now begun a drag race down into turn one. And this is where the BMW used to be that, that little bit stronger in a straight line, even with a lot of aero. But you can see it's very much neck and neck. It's almost a perfect test for us. They've just done a drag race. Um, Aston Martin versus BMW, both leaving as late as they can on the brakes. Stallman's always one that you know will actually not run into you. And in fact, probably more a detriment to himself there and quite firmly chops the nose off of Engelhard behind him in that yellow Porsche and says, no, I'm not losing two places. One's enough. So uh, I mentioned about getting angry at Harry earlier on about penalties or Ben, but uh, those ones, that's just the game. If you speed, you speed. Oh, that was close at uh, <laughs> Engelhard's yellow Porsche. Nearly went into the back of Dominic Stallman there. Ooh, that was very, very close. And you can see number six there. Was that 66? Akbalu, Akbalu, yeah, who is having a bit of a nightmare. Potentially got some damage. Yeah, look at the front of that BMW in the background. It's not having a good time. <clears throat> that is a poorly looking BMW. Um, we've also got a five second penalty been added for car number 38 at the moment. And you can see a bit of a uh, back marker getting in the way. That's Renberg who possibly got caught up in some of the incidents early in the race because he's definitely a bit out of position. And I know he's been uh, putting in some laps, although he did make a last minute car change uh, in that spearhead race engineering car there. So he's uh, just switched across to the Honda. Quite a notoriously difficult car. And you've got Jagdenberg in the, in the background there as well. Um, just about to send it up the inside of, uh, there you go, just appeared on our screen. <laughs> oh, and actually Elbow's coming out there on uh, on Neil Kidd. Now, Neil's not one to, you know, sort of, oh. <laughs> Commentator's curse striking there. That was a car, I think, losing control just up, up the road there. These attack vector cars are dropping like flies, so we'll have to try and find Harry Stapleton in a minute because uh, we know he's he was still running last I checked. And actually, that was Jacksonberg off the road. Uh, just see him rejoining there at the bottom of the shot, uh, but manages to keep his position, whatever happened. I don't know if that was bouncing off a curb or what, but yeah, definitely just went a bit wide for a minute there. Now, where is Kirk? Uh, let's see if we can find him, shall we, for you, was I? Oh, he's having a battle right now, actually. Oh, he's about to join a battle. Um, so Kirk is number 39 in P9. And that means we'll finally get to see some of Liam's handiwork on the uh, the Warbirds. Oh, uh, he kind of just held his line on the inside, yeah. I think the issue there, you can see it was the movement then from the uh, green car, which was uh, Winkler, wasn't it? Just kind of drifts towards the middle of the track and then clips uh, clips rolls on the way through. If he just held his line perfectly straight, it would have been all right. But the, the nature of the track is it kinks a bit and he just stayed where he was rather than sort of follow the track and stay left. Very nice livery that he has on his AMG there. So looking slightly worse for wear at the front end, whatever's happened to it, but uh, still still looks nice. He's got a, uh, a rear view full of Bentley at the moment, which is Bart Van Manekes there. He's actually coming through to lap them. So you can see the little blue flag in the top left. So 
again, um, you can't see a full kind of hit rundown, but you can see little things that are going on to answer your question from before, Griff. You know, you've got their deltas in the top left of whichever car we're looking at. Um, their current lap time, best lap time, lap that they're on, delta. And also, if they've, as I say, if they've served their pit stops. Right, everyone, it's over halfway. If you've been here before, you all know about driver of the day already. But basically, let us know who you think is the driver of the day. You can let us know between now and when the checkered flag drops. And then the driver with the most votes in chat will get a extra bonus point towards their championship tally. I need to try and find this battle with kids uh, elsewhere. I can see a few drivers in the pits because we're about to have a drag strip down into turn one. So Hemmings in the monster logo to McLaren on the inside as they head down to turn one as number 85 clears their stop and go penalty for speeding in the pit lane. Uh, I think that one was for. Uh, Vols then has a little bit of breathing room as they now come out of turn one, but Kid not making too much of a challenge there to defend. They see Jagdenberg in the background. Uh, that's Max Jagdenberg. So you've got Winkler behind. Now remember Winkler was leading the race until he pitted. Um, and actually, look at that. Lancaster doing a great job of uh, just letting the traffic come through there. Not getting away because he was getting blue flagged. And then there's Metzger for Vega Sim performance also going through uh, in P35. And Sharman isn't a million miles away, actually, from where we're looking at the moment. He's just the next car back. And there we are. So it's still Vols then ahead. And if you remember, we watched Hemming get past um, Kidd in the background. Now, Neil Kidd is an expert at this. He, he'll just sit back and watch people squabbling in front of him and then pick up some places right at the end, especially if they crash. And look at that. I mean, he's brought right into contention for it now. Perfect timing. And then just behind that, you've got uh, Max Jagdenberg. And just behind that, you've got Bart Van Manekes. So you've got a number of cars all close together, all racing for points with 15 minutes left on the clock. And that's the driver of the day votes. All you need to do for that is just to type your favourite driver's name and then they will potentially get an extra point if they have the most votes as Vols goes wide. I think that's going to open the door for Hemming to come through. And somehow it's not. How did he have that traction? If anything, he's pulled away. He's pulled away whilst on the grass. He's got some studded tyres on the back end of that AMG there. Unless Hemming slid a little bit as well. We just didn't quite pick it up to see it. But yeah, um, Vols, Vols manages to lift the fight another day on that one as he makes his way through the uh, notorious cheetah curve. And you can see the car bounces a little bit. Does lose a bit of time here, though. Hemming goes to the inside. Has to use all of the curb. Vols giving him no more room than he needs to. A little bit of elbows out, and then he gets the move done. And now Neil Kidd's going to have a little bit of a bite of the cherry as well as they come down to turn one across the start-finish line. That's Hemming in the middle in the white McLaren. You've got the Shiba Garage multicolored Lex on the inside then as they hit the braking zone in a minute. The AMG staying for the outside. Vols going to go for the cutback, I think. Can he make that work, or is he going to lose two places in as many corners? I think Kidd's going to get through there. Yes, he does. Neil Kidd makes it through as well, so Vols having a bit of a nightmare there. And it all started from bouncing off that cheetah curve. Uh, curb just a little bit and uh, great racing as I say that looks a little bit oh god I don't know if Vols is having some kind of issue because he just look, I, almost my game is because he just went veering off into the wall and back on again oh you can see Kid then just loses the rear end a little bit but then so does Neil's trying to hang on to the car and get the traction isn't quite able to make it stick but sends up inside at barbecue bend and that was quite respectful racing by Neil there to give that space and very aware of what's going on around him. Uh, sorry, Clemson. It's Engelhardt at the minute then trying to get through. I don't think he's going to do it. He goes to the outside. <sighs> Is he going to try and cut back? I'm not sure. I mean, actually, almost makes a stick, but Vols gives him no more room than he needed to there. And somehow Engelhardt keeps that on the track. I don't know how he did that. Yeah. I mean, that was just going to end in tears, wasn't it? I mean, Neil's, is, Neil's had so much more pace. Uh, tries to go up the inside, and then uh, Vol stays over to the left. I mean, that one was actually a bit more 50-50, but then after the last couple of corners, I can see why Neil's probably would have felt to go for that, because he did get it chopped off a little bit and run off the track a few corners previous. But anyway, that one's done and dusted. Now for us to deal with later on, what do we think in chat? Let's have a little bit of a look through. Dominic Storm has just not had an answer to that all evening and bring it back because it looks like Neil's going to go through. Side by side then as we start to come towards the uh, one of the hairpins. Yet yeah, we're coming in, so we're rounding off the lap. We've got to go through Cheetah and I think he gets that done. End of the back straight, down into the hairpin in the final sector. Nicely done there by Neil's. Another move under his belt. After an hour long of racing, here he comes across the line then. Matt Mitchell takes the win for round one of the Winter is Coming GT3 Championship. Followed a few seconds behind by Dominic Stallman for Vegas Sim Performance and then Mr. Bjorkman in P3. But Matt Mitchell, wow. 
Wow, wow, wow. What do we think of that, folks? Who would have called that one? The top seven all cross the line pretty close together there. Then within the same 11 seconds after an hour of racing is pretty impressive. So Dominic Stallman uh, coming in second after race winner, Mr. Matt Mitchell. Bjorkman in P3, Bucken P4, Chrissy Palmer for Indian Motorsport in P5. Um, right, everyone, thank you as always for your comments. Thank you for the driver of the day vote. Thank you for rallying your friends to come and vote for you. Um, thank you for those that are typing and driving and managing all of that. <laughs> and uh, thank you, of course, to Harry, George and Ben in the background um, as well. So we'll be back in a couple of weeks for round two. Uh, we'll try and see if we can get some other streams or certainly other videos and things out in the meantime, but we'll definitely be back for round two of this in a couple of weeks. So thanks everyone. Have a wonderful evening and we will see you next time.